Hey everybody, this video is gonna dive into how I learned how to draw my 3D designs and do my AutoCAD designs for my airframes. I've been asked to do this video for a couple of years and I've shied away from it because there's a lot of stuff here and I hate making really long videos, so let's get started. So basically the way I learned to do this is in the late 70s, I started getting into model airplanes. Okay, I was doing the Gillows gliders, the Gillows wind-up planes, Around 1980, 81, I got into RC, started flying gliders and uh, 40 size glow. I did experiment though around 1981 or 80, it might've been 79, but if you remember the old Polaroid cameras where the film came out the front, the pack of film actually had a battery in it. And I found out by putting that battery on a six volt um, motor with a propeller, uh, I could put it on my gentle lady and uh, Goldberg gentle lady and basically fly it for about 60 seconds off that pack. Now, those packs were expensive. I always had to wait till somebody used one up for me to get the battery out. So I was only doing maybe one flight a month uh, that was under electric power. But I always kind of joked that that was where I started with electric flight. And it had a light, a little bitty uh, micro switch that would uh, turn on the motor on and off. So basically, if I kicked the rudder really hard one way, really quick it would kick the motor on and if i kicked it the other way it'd kick it off and i could get a couple hundred feet and have a lot of time a lot of fun up in the air with time so um building kits um when you build basically any kit like a pica kit a top flight kit a sig kit a royal any of those kits they came with a drawing and that drawing was basically the instructions on how to assemble the airplane so you're probably your first interaction with true drawings was the the ones that were made for assembling an airplane they weren't for building an airplane um uh where you cut out the parts and the bulkheads and everything and did it yourself so um then you you know nowadays you say where do i find plans the true type of plans i could build an airplane off of and they're not easy to find i mean there are a lot of free places to go though and um AMA has a service for a small fee that you can get some, some plans. Um, and they've actually got a lot of plans. Uh, but they're smaller aircraft. They're not the big aircraft like I've done. Um, you can also go to Aerofred. you got to register. He's got a lot of drawings. Uh, Zeroli for a fee, has really nice warbirds and bigger airplanes. And Precision Cut Kits also has them. And they're, they've got uh, Don Smith and some other drawings. They're really, really good. <clears throat> but when you think a minute from building from plans, what have you actually built from, um, I'm sorry, from drawings? What have you built from drawings in your life? Plastic models are actually built from drawings that are used for assembly. Um, you know, the Zeroli, Don Smith, all of those, the Top Flight, all of those, you've actually done it already. But let's say you want to make those plans. So how do you, how do you make plans like I've learned to make? And keep in mind, I've done all of this without a day of college. I've just totally taught myself all this stuff. So the way I did it was I started with sketching. I'd buy trace paper. I would lay it over um, a plans that I had, drawings, and I would sketch out the pieces. And then I could take that and put it on like an opaque projector or overhead projector and, and shine it onto a wall, move it away from the wall and make it bigger and I would trace it. And that's how I did my very early ones. That's how I taught myself how to draw plans and it was with a number two pencil. Um, I had a really cool plane called a shoestring stunner, which was a control line plane. And I wanted to make a bigger version because it was made for like a 20 size and I wanted to put like a Fox 35 on it. And I did exactly that. I traced it with trace paper and then I went into uh, an overhead projector and projected it on a wall and made it bigger. But I knew one day that I would have to learn AutoCAD because it was, I mean, this was 15 years ago. It was, um, it was really starting to get some momentum. And um, I bought a software, a software called IntelliCAD. And IntelliCAD gave me the ability to um, draw the airframes like many of you have seen me draw before. And it's not around anymore. It's extinct. It's gone. It was a, I think, $65 for a one-time purchase and you owned it. Keep in mind, most good AutoCADs, you're gonna have to invest something in it to own it. There are some free ones out there that work pretty decent, okay? 
But for me, the type of drawings I do, I needed a good drawing platform, both in uh, 2D and 3D. Um, then my first 3D software was 3DS Max 5, which is 15 years old. And um, it's, it's, uh, it might be older than that. It might be 18 years old. Um, I was lucky that I got a free version of that from a college student that had one of the college licenses for it. And um, that's how I learned how to draw 3D with the 3DS Max. There's also DraftSite, which is made by Desalt Systems, the same people that do uh, SolidWorks. It's about $99 a year, so that is an investment. Okay. Um, CompuFoil is how I design all my, my wings and everything. So with CompuFoil, you're going to pay $39 for the base program. When I got all the add-ons, it was about $75, and you own that forever. It's a one-time purchase, okay? AutoCAD Lite is what I use now for all my drawings. The nice thing about doing AutoCAD, everybody, is that if you want to play with a 257-inch wingspan like my B36, you can just scale it however you want in AutoCAD. When you're working with real physical drawings and going to Kinko and asking them to blow them up, it's hard to blow an airplane up to 257 inch wing. Okay, it's best to design it um, in AutoCAD and then you can print it on a 42 uh, inch wide large format plotter. Uh, that is not cheap. I pay about $55 a month for it, $420 a year. It's an investment, but I need it for the designs I do. Then you have Fusion 360. There is still a free version for uh, modelers. Though some of the add-ons you need will push you into the version that you need to purchase. Uh, so you can still do your step files and your STLs so that you can do your 3D stuff. Because as you know, I'm in love with doing 3D models of engines and all kinds of stuff. But I pay 60 a month, which is 332 a year for my Fusion 360. So between the two of those right there, I'm up to about 750 a year that I pay for my CAD programs. I know that's not cheap. Not all of you can even begin to want to invest in that. That's just what I'm doing. So let's talk about for a minute that you found a free AutoCAD software and you can import a PDF. This is how I get most of the shapes for my bulkheads. I get most of the shapes. Uh, I, mean, I keep in mind, my, my airfoils are made in CompuFoil. But my bulkheads, you've got to figure out how to draw that into AutoCAD. So what I do is I import a PDF, and then I look at the bulkhead lines in a regular three-view drawing you might download off the internet. And I draw those bulkheads, and then I can turn off the uh, PDF, and right there, you've got your bulkheads and you can scale them to whatever scale of airplane you're wanting and then you can detail them you know put the notches in there for stringers you can start putting hard points in for landing gears you can start putting all that in okay but keep in mind it's taken me about 18 years to learn how to do the type of drawings and plans i do today and i'm still pushing myself there's still things every time i go to design an airframe for somebody that i need to go and, and, and scratch my head and figure out exactly how I do that. So, um, but you also need to understand how a plan works. And what I mean by that is when you used to build like a Gillows plane when you were a kid, you know, you were basically laying things out on it, gluing it, and then pulling it off the plan. And then you were looking at how things went together. You need to understand that if you have a, <clears throat> a fuselage, that has to be built as a top half sitting on your table, you need to be able to draw it that way. So you need to think about mechanically, how is my plan going to work so I can actually build this thing? Sure, I'm going to have all my parts here that I can cut out from the plans, but how am I going to actually assemble this? So you need to think about that when you're laying your plans out and designing it, how you're going to really make that kind of thing work. So here's some things to think about when you're going to actually import a PDF you're gonna draw all your bulkheads. You're gonna import like maybe from CompuFoil, all your airfoils. You're gonna get everything into an AutoCAD environment. Okay, once you're in that environment, you need to think about basic mechanical engineering. Okay, balsa wood is extremely strong. Basswood is stronger. Um, hardwoods are really strong. And um, uh, plywood is strong. 
But when you think of some of the planes I have designed, you know, the B-36 without any system in it was just a balsa uh, skeleton. It only weighed 17 pounds with a 257 inch wing because I used a lot of carbon fiber in the right places. I used virtually no hardwood in it. There was some plywood and some bulkheads, but it was basically almost all balsa wood, probably 75% balsa wood. My MSL-2 has a 188 inch wingspan and only weighs 58 pounds. And that's with batteries and everything in it ready to fly. So that airframe empty was around 21 pounds. So you need to really think about when you're gonna draw your plans, you wanna mark on ribs, are they balsa, plywood? Everybody for some reason wants to go to plywood thinking it's going to make the plane stronger. Most of our planes are designed for some hard landings, but they're not designed to fly into the side of a barn. So you need to figure out how to build light. And when I first started building, I built lead sleds. And I learned over time what really worked. Um, you need to understand your power system. If you're going to put a big, heavy, vibrating gas engine in a uh, airplane, it's going to have to be a lot stronger than if you're putting an electric motor. That's one reason I love electric. They don't shake apart. Um, very few of my electric airplanes have uh, firewalls thicker than eighth inch light plywood because there's not all that vibration. Um, you need to understand basics on how landing gear is gonna work and how you're gonna put the hard points and make it all fit into the, where your, your spars will go. I, des I, I built a <clears throat> B29 one time where the designer completely put the spars in the wrong spot. So you actually had to bit cut the spars and build um, basically strengthening blocks around where the landing gear went up. If he would have moved the spar forward three quarters of an inch, it would have never had to been cut. So think about where your landing gear is going to go and where your spars have to go. Um, and then you need to think about how am I going to put a radio in this airplane? So as you're drawing, keep in mind, when you start with that PDF and you outline everything and you pull that off, turn the PDF off, you've only got probably the first 10% of that drawing started. You're putting in the stringers, putting in the spars, putting in everything else is what takes the meticulous time to do drawings. Um, now, if you're just wanting to take a 50 inch airplane off the internet, the drawings, and make it a hundred inch, go to Kinko's and just have them blow it up, okay? Just, you know, just enlarge it. But if you're wanting to learn to draw on CAD and all those things, um, it is going to be some dedication that you're going to have to really put into it. But I tell you, it's totally worth it. When you think of some of the things I've learned to design, and I'm just the average Joe here, okay? I'm just like any of you. That if you want to put the time into it, and it's, it's an hour here or there. It's not every night two hours to learn how to do this, people. It's really not. So um, the, one of the last things you need to think about, actually before you even start, when I go through all this, the last thing I want to talk about is what are you going to build the airplane out of? Is it going to be foam? A lot of cool foam airplanes out there. A great friend of mine who passed away, John Morgan, built some of the most beautiful warbirds all out of foam. Very little wood, uh, except like the landing gear block and maybe the firewall. Everything else is styrofoam, blue foam. Um, are you going to do a hybrid where you've got foam sheeted with balsa wood and some fiberglass? Are you going to do an all fiberglass fuselage from a plug? You need to think about all these because when you're designing your fuselage, if you're going to build a plug, all you have to do is build those bulkheads so you can build a, a plug. And then you're going to build bulkheads that hold like the spars to the wing or the horizontal stab spars, things like that. Um, and then where do you learn this stuff? On the internet, and I know everybody jokes about, oh, they went to Google and think they're expert. You can become a, an expert off YouTube right now. I'm telling you, you really can. If you follow, follow a guy named Large Christensen, who is on YouTube teaching Fusion 360, I would have never mastered Fusion 360 with my motors and everything if it wouldn't have been for me following uh, the first month I had Fusion 360 in Lars. He had four or five um, Fusion 360 for beginners, and they are awesome. AutoCAD, there is everything on YouTube. Just type in AutoCAD for dummies. If you want to learn SolidWorks, top it, type in SolidWorks for dummies. It's all out there, people, and it's really, really good stuff. So what I want to do is just recap really quick here because I know we covered a lot of stuff. And look, I know this is intimidating as hell. 
It, it really is because people think I can't afford to do that or I can't invest this. Anybody can learn to do this. And there are ways to do it without hardly spending any money. You know, there are free AutoCAD programs out there that will help you enough to start learning how to actually draw in a 2D environment. So real quick, let's recap. I started in the late 70s, 80s messing with model airplanes, so I knew how they were built. Um, if you've built from a kit of any kind, even a plastic model, you've seen drawings which are instructions, but those, those are really plans. Um, you can go to different plan services and find plans and download them, and you might not even need to make yours, but if you want, if it's a 50 to 60 inch plane and you want to double it, go to Kinko's, copy it, and blow it up. Um, building from like a Zeroli plan and stuff like that, you're not doing your own drawings, but if you want to be able to do those type of Zeroli drawings, you're going to need to learn to do AutoCAD. Um, I use AutoCAD right now. I use CompuFoil for my wing designs, horizontal stabs, vertical stabs, and wings. I use AutoCAD Lite and Fusion 360. And uh, go to the internet and learn these things. I hope you find this informative. I hope this made sense. I know people have asked me to actually do how-to videos, but to be honest, they're already on YouTube. You don't need to watch me spending time drawing one of my planes. Because I'll tell you one of the things that is really difficult for me is I never get done. And if you're a designer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You just keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And somewhere you just got to say, for God's sakes, it's good enough. Start cutting wood. Let the sawdust fly and build your airplane. And I will get a drawing 90% done and then mess around with it for six more months. And I really don't need to do that. I need to just commit to say, hey, your drawings are good enough. Go make your airplane. Okay, so I hope you all find this great and informative. If you like it and you love it or whatever, like and subscribe on my YouTube. Send me a message through YouTube if you've got any questions or need any help on this stuff. And I'm here to help. And you have a rocking day. Be safe, everybody, and take care. Bye-bye.